hello guys welcome back to drop code toots once again and in this video we are going to be treating more of css so in a previous video we talked about css i showed you guys the basics of css we did a little bit of css we did the basics of css but in this video i'm going to be taking it further we are going to be building this basic front page so there's really nothing much here when it comes to functionality it's just design we are going to be focusing on i'm going to be teaching you guys positioning and some other things like that in css so if you take a look at this page now we have the navigation bar then we have a little um, hero image right here the little bit of text then a button with a little bit of animation then when we scroll down we have this um, we have three cards right here with text written on them random text then we have buttons also here which are also animated then a little um, beneath the card we have a little bit of animation also with a little bit of shadow under those cards so and we have our footer so this is basically what we are going to be doing and it's a little bit responsive not fully responsive though but a little bit responsive so if you look at it we still have the card everything then basically when it gets smaller when the size shrinks down the cards go stack on top of each other as you can see here so this is what we are basically going to do in this video so i want to welcome you uh, you guys so if you are new on this channel please subscribe to my channel and if you like this video hit the like button it really helps this channel a lot and if you were not in the last video meaning you haven't taken the html and css crash course i'll, I'll put a link below in the description check it out and make sure you take those courses it's very important because i'm not going to be explaining too much in this course i'm just going to be going straight down into building this um, front page so uh, with that said let's get right into the video so the first thing we're going to do now is to let me minimize this browser then i'm going to go back to my second screen my first screen actually then remember we created the web development folder in the previous video so i'm not going to open that up with sublime text and if you're on a windows you already know how to do that i've said that in the previous video so that shouldn't be a problem right now so in the last class we did treated html and a little bit of css but in this course i'm going to be creating another folder here i'm calling it um websites okay there should be a folder there so inside the website folder i'm going to create another folder i'm going to call this folder images so our images are going to be stored inside of this folder and in that same directory i'm also going to create another folder and call it css so our css is going to be stored inside of here and in the css folder i'm going to create a file there and call it main.css then use the shortcut ctrl s to save then the name i already typed inside the file is going to show up here as the name and i'm going to just save that inside the css folder and we have it here look at it right here so the next step is to um create our index.html inside of this list new file then call it index.html ctrl s then save and we have that so once i close this folder you see we don't we don't see any of the documents inside of that folder so i'm going to close all this so i can focus on just everything inside of this folder so we have the index.html right here i'm going to open up the css2 it's going to be here i'm going to clean that up save that and save that what's going on 
sorry guys save that and save this also so the next thing we are going to do now is to get our image so where i got the image from i got the image from pixels.com so if you don't know about pixels.com i recommend you go there you can get free stock photos from them so they are not actually paying me to advertise their website but it's where i get almost all the photos i use sometimes for um, projects i do on my own so this is a picture i picked you can pick any one of your choice you can search for desk or any other thing you want to search for depending but i'm just going to pick this picture i'll click on it then it's going to open up and i'll choose the free download so i'm going to download that then i'm going to save it straight into the folder we created which is the web development folder inside the website directory then inside of images yes then i'm going to change the name i don't like this name so i'm just going to call it hero.jpg and save that so we have our picture we have our files i think that's all we need to get started so this is exactly what we're going to be using so i'm going to open up a new tab cancel this let me close out this okay let me leave this we need to open a new tab here oh let me just close the tab and open it straight from the folder so i'm going to go into the files then into my desktop then web development then the websites then open the index.html okay open with browser so let's open it with sorry guys i'm going to open it with google chrome yes google chrome so it's going to open up here minimize this then open back the browser okay so we have a fresh html page open on the browser so let's get started let's start writing some code so i'm going to first start with the markup before going into the design of the page so we're going to write our html first so there's a little shortcut i want to show you guys once you um click on shift and exclamation sign like this okay it doesn't work here it works in the um, visual studio code but for sublime text we do html then press tab is is going to give you the basic um shortcut to things you don't need to stress yourself about writing that so we're just going to make this uh what i'm going to call this uh, let's call it the uh, uh, basic let's call it home page let's call it home the home page so that's the title of the website no you can call it anything you like actually but that's just what i want to make use up for this so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to be linking our css to our html so if you remember in the last video is the link rel then style sheets then the type of the the type of the folder you are linking which is the text file slash css file so where it's located href is located in the css folder then main.css and we save that so i'm just going to test this out then in the previous video i didn't talk about the reset <coughs> normally in html there are some elements that have custom styling um when when they are written and it can be kind of hard trying to figure out where to remove the padding where to remove the uh, margin from those elements so it's always best to if you need the reset you just use asterisks like this then open your curly brackets then write padding of zero then we have margin also zero so this is basically going to reset the page so that the, we are not going to have any margin or padding on the page everything is going to be set to zero and the next thing i want to do is to style our body like this then give it a background dash color 
um, I'm going to make the color like um, a little bit of gray. So I'm going to be using triple D that is gray. Then next thing I want to do is to give it a this style of font. Font family. Let's go that we're going to be using Arial. Then Helvetica in case. Then font size. The font size is going to be 16 pixels for basically almost everything so um I, in the last html video i talked about comments in css when we want to write comments to make our um, file much more easier to read make use of this symbol here then asterisk you see it comments out every other thing in there so i'm just going to write general styles here so these styles apply to everything on the page then i'm just going to have the ending of that so end of general style styles then we're going to close that here and save so the next thing i want to touch in the body is um what else what else the background that, that i think that that's basically all so we're going to save scroll down and reload the page as we can see the full background of the page is now a little bit of gray so i'll go back so that shows that our css is well connected to our html so the next thing we're going to do now is to start writing the markup so the first thing i want to create on that page is the navigation bar so i'm not going to use the html5 um, tags of nav then enter to space them then what we're going to have in the navigation bar are the links so i'm going to be making use of the ul then inside we're going to have the li it's also going to have the a tag for links like that then this one is going to be um hashtag for the home page then we're going to call the link is the home so that's basically all we're going to do there so i'm going to have other links too this one is going to be um register the registration so i think this is really two things two pages we are going to create because i'm actually going to create the registration form but i don't think that's going to be in this video but it can be in the next video and if there's enough time we can still do that in this video so i'm just going to make use of these two links then we're going to have i think that's that's basically all for then let's just add one more link to make it look much more we'll add the about then push that to the top so i use control shift up to push element to the top or down or below so i'm just going to push that to the top i want the about to be before the register so that's all for the navigation bar actually i'm going to give this an id an id of hash um okay now dash bar a unique id and i can use that to style just now bar. so the next thing that's going to be on the page is the hero image we talked about so i'm going to have a div so let me just put in comments here so because when the um the html markup gets plenty as we go on and go on it starts looking confusing a little bit so i'm just going to call this now gation then close that and leave a little bit of space then come here the right end of end of navigation bar and leave a little bit of space then now we can create our div but we need we still need another um, comment here which says start of Hero image, hero image section. Let's leave that like that. 
sorry and section so that's that so we're going to write all our euro image code within this area so we have the div we open that up and i'm going to give this a class an id actually then call it hero hero dash wrapper then inside the the hero dash wrapper is going to contain an image then we're going to have a bunch of text in there and a button so we're going to have um let's see an h2 header which is going to be our first web page right here then we're going to have another paragraph here well let's make this another header but it's going to be a smaller one which is like h4 and we're going to close that and we say welcome to our home page so that's a little that's very basic we don't need something too much then we're going to have a button here which is going to say learn more the button is not going to do anything but when we get to the final project of web design our buttons are going to be going to other pages we're going to have javascript animations and stuff like that but since we haven't gone through the javascript crash course we're just going to be doing basically design without any javascript so i think that's all that's going to be on the hero image we have an image and two decks and a button i think that's uh then the next thing we're going to talk about is the content then the footer lastly so we're going to write um say start of main content let me just copy this Yes, and so we're not going to make waste too much time here. So we have another div here. Then inside this div, I'm going to give you some an ID of um, main content. Then inside the ID, inside that main content, we're going to be having cards in it, and the way we are going to arrange that it depends so let's let's just take a look at the web the web page once again so we are done with the navigation bar we create a navigation bar like that then two text and a button then we have three cards over here so this is this from, from this white area here this white area uh, beneath the cards is the main content then we have card one card two and card three okay i think that's where we're going to do that so go back to our code then we see a div with an id well, let's make the class class of card dash one then the content inside is basically going to be header and the html5 also gives us this header tag to make it up so the other tag is going to contain um, uh, just a basic question of what we do with this capital letter so what we do so after the header we have some basic text which is inside the paragraph then we're going to use the same dummy text lorem then tab hit the tab to put the text so this I think that's this all okay we have a button also let's not forget that we have a button we say see more see more I think that's all that's in the card so I'm just going to copy this card control C and then make more cards so then here is going to be card three <coughs> then we have card two then we have card one so that's that's basically all and we're going to give our button a class to or what do we just target the button within 
card. Let's just have a separate card in case we want to reuse the same styles in in design another button. So we can also make use of that same styles we designed this one with with the other button in the other button design. So I'm going to click on that, then click here also holding my control key. Click that, then click the last one. So they are all clicked. So whenever I press like typing something in this area right now, it's going to affect the other two buttons at the top. So I'm just going to be a class equals to then this. Then inside of that, I'm going to call it PTN dash secondary the secondary button. We save that. That's all. And I just remember we also have to give this button a class to of btn primary so now that we have our uh, three cards next thing is a uh, footer so we're just going to do that now first footer Okay, so it's giving me this red sign because of a little bit error, a little bit of error there. So inside the footer, what what's going to come be, be inside the footer? We just need a copyright. Then, as a developer, you want your name to be on whatever site you're building. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to, sorry guys, we're going to have copyright to be in a paragraph should be in a paragraph uh, yeah, let's just put in a paragraph then we say copy right then to make that um, copyright sign we use the ampersand sign then copy then semicolon then to do that so it changes the color to this tell us that we're writing the right correct thing then we, we're going to have an em here em tag which is for emphasis then inside there i'm just going to write powered by drop code suit so that's basically all okay I don't like I don't like the fact that my name is on capital letters. So just write it like this. Mm, I like it like this. So we are powered by let me this small by yeah, let's just see part by like this so th this is all let's take a look at our markup and let's see how it looks like so once i reload the page exactly we have a not so good looking markup so we have a navigation here we have a hero then we have our three cards then our footer that's basically all we need for now then right now let's jump into the css and do some magic so I'm just going to go back into my code then I have my main.css here, so I'm actually going to bring this over here. So the only thing we've done is just the reset, just to reset the general styles. So in these general styles, I'm going to actually add the buttons to it. Uh, let me just make a separate um, comment for buttons. Buttons here. Like that, you see that. Then inside the, remember the first button we could use. We use the name was um, um, button primary. Then we have button secondary. So remember in the previous video, I told you guys that whenever we we're making use of classes, the the way we are going to target those classes is by using a dot notation. So we use dot, then the name of the class we want to target, which is btn dash primary then open this so for these buttons 
I'm just trying to I want to try and write the code in a in a way that I'm not going to repeat myself. So I'm not I'm not going to write some things twice when I when I have the opportunity to write them once. So to do that, I'm going to um, give both buttons um, the same styling in a way. Then when they're supposed to have separate styling, I'm going to give them separate styling. Okay. So let's control C, then do a comma here, then do a dot again, then BTN the secondary secondary button. Then inside there, the good book going to have a um, border of um, none, so we don't want any border. Then next, we want the color of the text to be. Um, Kind of gray, um, yeah, not too, not too white. So the next thing we want is to have give them padding. The button should have a padding of from the top and bottom. We want 15 pixels, and from the left and right we want also let's say 20 pixels. Save that. Then next we want to give a background color. So I hope you guys are understanding this. So we want the background color of hashtag um, 3D3, kind of gray. There's a little bit of darker gray. So what else, what else do we need? Um, let's just take a look at that. Let's see if we're on the right path. So when I reload, okay. The buttons are okay. Oh, that's good. I think that's all. Oh, let's just make the text a little bit bigger. There. So we want um, font that size to be let's see, let's see 18 pixels. 18 pixels. Then we want font width to be let's say 500. Let's look at that now. Yeah. So it's, it's much more bigger. So that's better. So after doing that. So after doing that, in the markup up here, we can see that the button here is rounded, not like this one. This one is just basically square. So I'm going to make those other ones rounded corners. So that calls for a separate um, CSS for that particular um, class. So you see second three then open a curly bracket then we use border dash radius for that then we're going to keep it a border radius of let's say 2 em let's see how that looks like okay that's that's not this file this one reload and we have our rounded corners so that's what uh, we're still going to style the buttons more but for now let's just leave it like that and move on so now I'm going to start with the navigation. So I call this navigation styling. Copy that. So you see. End of navigation styling. The first thing we're going to target is the hashtag nav dash bar. Remember, we gave it a, an ID name of nav dash bar. So the first one to give it a background, background dash color of hashtag 333, same thing gray. Let's look at it, reload, and we have the background. So the second thing is that we want to target the UL of that. So it's hashtag nav. Okay, we don't need to target the UL because I wanted to remove the padding before, but I remember we've already done the reset, so there's no padding right there. So the next thing we're going to target is I think the links. Yeah, I think it's a link we're going to target right now. So we hashtag nav dash bar. Then we're going to target the LI. Let me tell you why. Because they are all in block formats and we want them to be um 
close to each other by the sides we want them to be in line so to do that we have to target the li tags because in the markup here we go back to that you see we have the ul tag here then we have the li tags which the links are inside the li tags so we have to target the li then make all of them in line so they can be close to each other before targeting the links to design the the fonts and everything so you see li so this is going to target only what is within this id so if you have an id here i want to target elements inside the, that particular id or class we can just call in the elements by the names instead of giving them separate classes so the next thing we're going to do now is to do a display of inline receive then we go back and reload as you can see they are both on the same line so the next thing we want to do now is to give a little bit of spacing so we say padding dash right let's say a little bit of 10 pixels let's see how that looks like reload let's add more pixels they're still kind of too close to each other so 20 pixels should be fine reload that yes and that that's okay so we want to give also give that a background color too so okay that would be when we put our mouse on on that so when we put our mouse we want there to be a background color so to do that uh, okay so let's say we have it now bar dash bar then li then column hover so this actually means when we put our mouse over that element we get some stylus to pop up so the next thing we're going to do is give it a background dash color so we're going to grab colors from this website here material ui.co dash slash colors so we're going to get our colors from here i'm going to copy this orange color here once i click on it it automatically copies the color so I go back to my code then drop that the control v and remember we always need hashtag for writing x hexadecimal um, color codes so we go back to our, our folder here then reload so once you over we get this background once we over there then we still need to do some editing we don't want them to be placed at the left we want them to be placed at the right so we have to float them so we have a flow property then we flow to right so that basically takes those elements to the right so we reload okay something is wrong here the background is still supposed to be there no it's not so uh, let's see let's see hmm let's keep this little bit of height out of say 60 pixels and let's see reload yeah okay it's still there we have the height the next thing we want to do now is to bring those links down to the bottom of the page and to do that we have to add a little bit of padding so instead of using just padding that's right i'm just going to use padding to be 20 pixels all around so once we reload that uh -huh, it should come down then we have this to go over everything but i want the background to be touching both edges like from the top and the bottom as you can see there's a little bit of space down below the black is still showing but we don't want that to be so we have to make a padding uh, let's give it a height so give it a height so it for height height oh let's make okay this is what we'll do you see padding for the top and the bottom to be 60 pixels it should be the same pixels with the height up to now but then padding right and left should be 20 pixels i think that should work so oh no it didn't work it went way under so let's just move this let's give it a height okay. 
a light document right or matching let's see mm, let's try it CSS can be confusing at times so 60 pixels let's go back load. okay it's over because of the padding so we just make this padding dash right so I think that should solve the problem. Reload. We solved it, but not fully. Let's see, look at it. Let's make this 40 so it can equal to 60. So we reload. But still not. I don't know what's going on right here? Let me see. Mm. Let's make the top and the bottom top and the bottom 40 pixels and the right and the left 20 pixels let's see let's remove the heights remove that just going over I don't get why this is doing this so. Let's just leave that for now. We'll figure that out. So let's just give it. Let's see, 30 pixels. I don't know why this thing is going over like that. Let's see a little bit. Uh, let's style the links. Uh, see how it goes. So what I want to do now is see hashtag now dash bar. Then we see the e tag. So well, before I style the links, I'm going to give the link a general styling at the top here. So all links should be color of white. F F F then you should have text decoration of known take a look at that now okay looks better the next thing is then installing our links here i don't think there's a need for any styling anymore for the links Take a look at I think this is enough styling for now. So so we have a now bar now by set we have the home page, the about and the register on the now bar. So the next thing we're going to go into is to look for um try and edit the hero image so to do that I'm going to remove this then go down here then see let's see hero uh, let me just make this two closer like this I'm going to see this. I say um, hero image section. Then for here, I mean, we're going to say end of save that. Then inside there, we're going to style the hero image. First thing we want to target the ID we called it, which is 
hero dash wrapper so i'm going to write that there hashtag hashtag hero dash wrapper so inside we're going to give it an height what's going on height of let's see 400 pixels let's make it a mean height so that when we we're sizing the the page to a smaller scale to a mobile um, size the height automatic uh, the height automatically increase from 300 and goes up and up like that so the text don't get to come out of the hero image so we have let's make this 300 let's leave it at 400 then the next thing we want is a background image dash image so this gives us the background image the next thing we're going to use is the url so we can find where our background image is located which is inside we have to go out of the css file because our main.css is inside the css folder so we have to go out of the folder then go into the images then get the hero.jpg so to do that we have to do double dot then the slash to go out of the folder then we go to images images folder then we have the hero.jpg we save that and let's take a look then we have our image exactly but as you can see the image is not complete some parts are below because the size is too small for the image so there are some css properties we can use to style our image whenever we put an image into our web page so the way we are going to handle that is by adding some css image property so you see background dash um, background dash size yeah background dash size let's call it cover so it can make use of the entire space given to it so let's reload you see we still get a little bit more of the image but it's not still complete it's not still complete at all so the next thing we're going to do is to add background dash and position so we're going to center the image vertically and horizontally so we save that then go back then reload and now we get our image does it still look full to me but we still get the image still looks good so the next thing we're going to do is dash repeat so in case if we have an image that is not as big as the width and tends to repeat itself so we have to put in no repeats there so the image takes the full width and makes use of everything without repeating the image twice or any amount of time though so next we're going to add this background attachment which is this we want the background to be fixed to where we should put it so let's go back and reload want the background to be fixed so i see once we scroll up the text tend to climb on that background giving it a little bit nice give it give it gives it a nice um, look nice feel to the website but without that let's remove the attachment fixed let's see how it is once we take out that background attachment and see if then go back to our web page then load as you can see everything loads with the image it does not the text underneath the image does not clamp does not go over the image so um it's it's looking too static not too good so we're going to bring back the um, property then as you can see it goes over the image once again so the next thing we're going to do is to style the h1 and the h4 i think elements on that page so to do that we're going to use our hashtag hero dash wrapper 
then we want to start get the you see let's let's be sure first of all if it's an h1 or h2 we have h2 and h4 so you see h2 comma the h4 we want the text dash align to be center let's look at that now reload so we have that at the center then i want to give it a little bit of think margin margin so we want it to from the top to go all the way let's say 35 percent to the bottom it should go down 35 percent then auto the rest should be auto let's see if that works for us okay doesn't work i think we're going to make use of padding here for that to work and let's see um 30 pixels save dot and let's see how that plays out reload does it still work out let's see okay i think i still put my auto here reload so there's a little bit of space between both of them but um, i also want to increase the size of each of them but since we're not going to be using the the same the same edits for both of them anymore so i'm going to separate them so as hashtag hero dash wrapper then target the h2 then open that and we're going to give them a color so we want them to have the same color so here we're going to have the font size to be like I think um, 32 pixels let's see mm. not that big let's see 52 pixels Okay, that's big enough, but we can't really see it. So what we're going to do there is we're going to take out this padding here and add padding to them individually. So see padding dash top should be 30 pixels. You know that and you can see any change yet. Let me just increase that so excess. Let's give them a position relative. Let's see. Still not going down. Let's kind of change the color to 333. Save. Reload. Now we can see it better. So, the next thing we want to do now is to move that button to the center. So, we see, we go back to our buttons, we start it, then we go to dot ptn dash primary. Let me see matching of let's see two em or two. See how that looks like. Let's try um. Center. 
See that one. That only works in flex box, but we just seen if that should work. So it's not working. What we're going to do now is to give it a matching. Okay, we already did that. Then we want it to be let's see if we want to. So since that's not working to make that a little bit simpler for me to work with, I'm not going to go back to the markup, then put all these elements in a div, then control them from there. So we're going to have a div here, then a closing div right here. I'm going to just push this. inside then give it a class of dash content save that then go back here then style that so you say hashtag hero dash add that hero dash Content. Then I want to have it stay at the center. Matching. Also, let's see. It also brings down the image also with it, so we don't want that to happen. So we have to keep this in position of absolutes so we can move it around its parent content and its parent content is going to be the hero wrapper here and i'm going to give that a position of relative relative we we'll save that and let's see reload so they all come together right here so now we can move them around without um, stressing ourselves out anymore i'm going to go back to the edit then I think I just clean this up. Don't need this. We don't need this. All we need is this. So what we're going to do now is to move this content around. And to move that around, I'm just going to say um left of let's say ten percent then top. We want it to move to the bottom a little bit of 20%. Then let's save that and see. So I'm moving a little bit, kind of slow. Then next thing we want is to do, let's, let's, make, let's just make this 50%, the top 50%. I want to do is to do transform then translate then we want to translate it from the bottom and the top the top and the bottom so we want that to be minus 50 percent then minus 50 percent sorry for the play that's passing so we load that and we have it close to the center but we just need to reduce some things to make it stay at the center so we're going to reduce the left to like 30 percent then we load that we're still going to reduce it a little bit or increase it i mean 40 percent then go back yeah we have it at the center but now we still have to increase the font back the way it was so to do that we're going to do this well let's see if we can increase that without actually targeting the um h2 and h4 let's see font star size maybe let's make it 10 pixels reload it goes bigger so we want the text, all of them to all be in center. So we say text dash align center. Save that. 
prelude and we have everything at the center but it's like as we make the text grow bigger it shifts out of being at the center so we have to correct that first we have to make our text grow bigger we want it more big so we load again we have a bigger text then now we can move it to wherever we want it to be I'm going to reduce it up to 30 pixels then reduce this to 20 pixels let's see load that and let's reduce this to 30 uh, 20 let's see how that plays out still the same thing let's just add here okay so we have our contents at the center as we can see but we want our text to be white and a little bit of white so to do that just add color to it to say color to be um hashtag this reload it will be white but it's not really that clear so let's just leave it the way it was just see two, two, two. reload so it's still a little bit easier all can let, let's just find another color that can make it easier to look look at let's use this and see go back to our page then reload it's a little bit better now so the next thing we want to do is to animate this button so once we put our mouse on it it changes color and the uh, the the mouse cursor also changes to a pointer cursor so the way we're going to do that is go back to style the button we'll go back to the top by button primary here then we want the cursor of the mouse to be pointer so that like that once we load the page and we get there you see the cursor changes to this hand kind of um, pointer here which is called the pointer so before it was just this kind of cursor that was on the button but now it's this pointer tell us that we can actually click on the button even though it's not going to do anything for now so the next thing we want to do is to when we put our mouse on it we want the colors to change in a nice way so next the way we can do that is to add the over to that so you don't ptn dash primary then over then open our bracket then we have a background dash color then we basically want to make use of the orange color just like in the the uh, markup I showed you guys. So we go back to the to the colors. Then let's pick this. Um, go back to our markup and put that there. Let's see. Then we have to add a transition to this. So transition actually means that um, it gives this a little bit of makes the effects slower and much more good looking. Instead of the effect happening like this, let me just show you guys how it's going to happen. We load the page, we have a color, it goes off like super fast. So it doesn't really look good the way it goes off like that. So we have to add a little bit of effect to that. So we say transition, transition, then we say we target all, then we say 400 milliseconds. That is, I think, 0 0.4 seconds or so. Uh, one second is a thousand milliseconds i think uh, uh, yeah it should be then we see 100 milliseconds then we want it to ease dash out of the page then so it eases out when we remove our mouse cursor then once we put our mouse cursor on it we want to also add a transition here target all 400 milliseconds then see ease dash in so once our mouse comes in, it animates it slowly. So you see, so now we have that nice animation goes in and out. 
so that's done that's for that we have our array image we have our navigation bar so this two cannot complete so let's take a look if it's a little bit responsive not too responsive now but it's still there but this one is not really responsive but we'll fix that later later on i'll show you guys how to fix that so next thing we're going to do now is to jump into our cards a card is going to take a little bit of time but let's get right into it fast so we're going to the cards so we call this up, um, So when that's done, see, then put our content inside of here. So the first thing we're going to edit is the main content. So the main content is going to have a background color. So let's see hashtag when dash content. We open that on the height to be or two. Then the width to be hundred percent speech. Then on the background, background color to be. Mm, I see. I see white, totally white. Receive. Then we go back to our page. And we would, and we have a white background here. The next thing we want to do now is to target the cards. So we see hashtag main dash content. Then to target the cards, they all have something in common if we check them. They all have card dash in common. Or they all have this in common. So they all have that in common. So instead of writing this, show you guys. So writing this targeting it like this it dot card dash one comma dot card dash two comma dot card dash three you guys can do it like this if you want but it's kind of a waste of time so the shorter method is to use this use div then open this straight brackets then inside of that we call the class then we have an asterisk equals to then we call in what's common between the three cards so which is card dash like this so this is kind of better so we open it and we edit all the cards at the same time so the card we want the width to be 33 percent because that gives us when we add them up it gives us 99 percent which is almost is close to 100 percent of the full width of the parent parent um, parent elements so the parent element is having 100 percent width and we want each of the cards to contain 33 percent of that so that's a little bit of math but it's not a, it's not complicated at all so after adding the width we want the the cards to have um, a background that's not that's not the next thing the next thing is we want them to if we save this and let's take a look reload you see they are all short they decide they've already resized each other themselves immediately we added the weight to the 3.3 percent but we want them to be on the same line they are all block elements we want them to be on the same line so to do that we're going to give them a display of inline use inline block or oh, let's see how inline goes so we have a load so it just gives them allows them to take the full width of each of um, the spaces despite the width we put there but when we say inline block so it uses the width stated which is 33.3 .3, then they are all on one the same line. So the next thing we're going to do now is to 
shift them a little bit um, further away from the actual hero image. So we're going to give them a margin of margin that in the stop of um, let's see 5 pm. Okay, so there's a little bit of space in between them and the hero image. The next thing we're going to do now is to style them. We have to add padding to it so the content don't go too close to to that to the edges. So we have padding of let's see one em. So as you can see, quickly we added the padding. Um, the other content moved um, right under the other content because we only have one percent left and. 1% I think 1% of the page is actually more than it's more than um, the padding we put around the element is more than 1% so to, to reduce that we have to add a property called um, border box to that so you see box sizing then we call it border box this allows the um, padding reduces the padding, then makes you calculate the one percent and share it among all the cards. So let's reload. Okay, that's not working. Let's go back. Let's give a padding of five pixels. The box. Reload. Um, they are back on the same line. The, the padding we actually put is way more than. Let's see 10 pixels. Let's see if it still works. Okay, it still works. So, the next thing we have to do is to give them a background, each of the cards to have a background. So, to do that, we're going to save background dash color, background color, or um, let's see. Let's choose a color from the material design website. Let's give them this color. Let's go back and add that to it. Then let's see how it looks like. Reload. So they all have their own individual colors. But to make them look better, we have let's add some more styling to them. So the first thing we're going to do text dash align center I want to center the text reload then they are centered the button is also centered so the next thing we're going to do now is to after the text align we're going to keep them let them have rounded corners so you see border dash radius radius of like um, 20 pixels let's see Load. that's too much let's see 10 so that's reload yeah it's a little bit better you can see you reduce it a little bit that's seven pixels reload it's kind of much more better so the next thing we want to do is to give them a little bit of more more style and more animation to it so what i used the other time is to get um a kind of um, animation from um box shadows here yeah, the box shadows so box shadow is simply using the rgba um, color scheme to create a shadow under any element so we have zero pixels to the top one pixel to the sides, then three pixels to the bottom of that card, which is this first card here. I think, okay, this first card here. Then when you over your mouse on it, there's zero. As you can see, there's zero pixel at the top. Then we have fourteen pixels to the sides and twenty pixels to the bottom. That is why the shadow is really obvious. Then the RGBA is actually the color we have red green and blue then this is the opacity 
which is applied to that color so it's supposed to be black but the more you reduce this opacity it allows the black to fade have this kind of faded so we put 0 0.8 here uh, let's say 0 0.8 you see the black is really obvious that it's a black so this is what we're going to actually use for our own um, website so i'm going to pick a card here we're going to pick this is card one two three i'm going to pick the the card three then i'll pick the card four then add the card five as my over effect so I'm just going to go back to the card for I pick this Control C. Go back to our code. So we go back to our code, then add that here. Control B. So we have the box shadow here. Then we save that. Go back to our browser and add this as the over effect. Control C back they are going to have this same elements but over effects on them we're going to copy this which you see they come all the way down here then do column over open that and put that there oh sorry I already copied something else I'm going to recopy this again ctrl c and go back then paste that then what's left is the animation so they're using um here on the card one we have your transition up all oh, then qb big then blah 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 this style is actually from google chrome from the developer tools i'll show you guys how to do that yeah. add the transition right here Ctrl V, save, and also add the transition right here. The over. So let's go ahead and look at our own styling. Reload our page. So we have a little bit of styling to our cards. When we over, nothing happens. Don't know why. Let's take a look at that. I'll go to see. Supposed to walk. I should do it again. Let's see. Okay, we got that out. Okay, now we have the animation. So once you over it changes like it becomes bigger. But I don't really like the fact that the black is really obvious so i'm going to pick something else for the default size then i'm going to make use of that so maybe i'm going to pick hmm, i think i'll just pick this one go back to card one then add this box shadow to it going to basically change this one to that then come around here then go back let's see then we load that page yeah that starts way better so it's much more good looking so the next thing we want to do is to style our text we don't want our text to look like the way it's looking they're all looking mumbled up together not looking so good so let's style that then when we're done with that to move on to the button we style our buttons too so let's go back so we're going to see we're going to basically copy these parts see then do that then write our header the style I header, give it font size, size of let's say 20 pixels. Then we want to have a margin dash bottom of um, let's see 1 em, and we want letter spacing 
from that with 0.2 EM, that's 0.2 EM, save that. Then next thing we want is for anti line height of let's see, 0.5 EM, save that. Let's see how it looks like. Reload. So we have that it looks way better. The next thing we are going to do now is for the remaining text on there. So we are going to have a text right here. We are going to have a text under for here. We have main content. Copy this. Then paste that there. Then for the paragraph, we are going to edit our paragraph. So we want a line dash height. For there, then we see 1.5. Yeah. then font that size the font size is a little bit small so we say 18 pixels and the next thing we need is a font okay we're using the same font family so we don't need to, really need to change anything else let's see it's kind of looking good looking good better so i think next we're going to tackle now is our button so we got this to work we have a nav we have a hero image then we have a card so we're almost done it's just in the nav bar and these buttons so let's quickly do that so we're going to start with the button secondary the secondary button separately so we're going to have border radius of 2 em let's reduce should reduce the border radius so we should leave it like that but let's let's leave it like that so we have to style that further, I'm going to add this animation to it. I'm going to have this box shadow to it. So we come down there and add that here. To add that. So we have dot PTN dash secondary. Very over on it over our mouse over the button we want the border dash just to be zero so we want it to like open up like a carton so we want it to have a border radius of 3 am then automatically go um square go square shaped so that's exactly what we want it to do so we want to add back this transition here, control C, then paste that there. Then we want it to have a background dash color. Background color of the same orange we made this up for the button one. So we're going to copy that and paste that here. Let's see if it does here how it looks like reload. So we have that effect now, as you can see. But I don't like the way the card is looking kind of like um, stuck to the the button. I don't like the way the button is looking kind of together with the card. I want it to pop out a little bit. Let it have this a little bit of material to it. So to do that, we're going to take the style, the box shadow of the card three. Let's go down to card three, then take the box shadow, copy that. And go back to our code then remove this box shadow here replace it with that save that and let's take a look at our web page reload and that's what we want we want it to just pop out a little bit then now we have our three cards fully functional but it's not responsive so we're going to deal with the responsiveness later on but we're almost done with our page so the next thing we need is to design our footer that's pretty easy so we go down we're already not having a lot of styles already so design the footer skip this uppercase footer styling and then and oh. So within the comments, we're going to have the footer here. We save that. So we say 
footer so we want it to have a background color of background color of the um, same with the nav bar which is 333 receive then we want our footer to have um, what else reload we don't get a background why is that use the footer okay i made this of p and em but i didn't put them in the div so div and we're going to copy this inside the div then give it an id of footer you yeah, save that go back to our main call this hashtag so we should see a background color right there so let's see i think this is a little bit lighter compared to the number let me change that to two so yeah, and that's better so we want the cards to have a little bit of space before getting to the footer so to do that we go back to our card then we say matching dash bottom to be like 10 em starts much let's see what's going on it's even getting closer to the cards so so much that bottom. Let me add that to this. Okay, that's much more better. So it looks even better now. So we have our cards here, then we have our footer down there. So what we're going to do now is to I just love these animations on the buttons so let's focus on the footer so we want our footer to have a height height of 60 pixels also then we want the color to be a little bit of gray save that go back reload and we have that so we want to space let those elements be in line also so to do that we're going to target those elements see hashtag now bar oh, sorry guys footer um they won't target the um paragraph then also the em because we're going to have some similar styles so we don't want to be repeating the same styles in different places so we're going to have p and em so we're going to both be display of in line and to have the let's see how that looks reload exactly but we want we, we are missing something with the copyrights it's supposed to have 2018 here yes yeah, okay that's better the full stop sorry guys we'll go back to our css they want them to have a padding dash right of, let's say 15 pixels then we also want them to be at the center text align center i think that should be all for that exactly then let's lighten up the text a little bit let's add font width of let's say 800 then on the size of let's see 18 pixels then we want let's just make the padding all around let's see how that works out okay it doesn't go let's keep them position relative same that still doesn't work see let's see matching Watch top let's see point five em uh, 
and then I'm moving down. So let's just leave it like that and the font weight is not even working well okay relax both of them okay should work now okay it's working it's much more bold and much more looking good so i think that's all so we have our nav bar we have our hero image then we have our cards, then we have our footer. So the next thing we want to focus on is responsiveness. So if we take a look at this now, it looks really shitty. So as we scroll down, this image, image um, the text in that container um, shrinks too much. Then here, the card gets too long and ugly then the footer is still okay but a little bit of space in here because we added the margin to this to this uh, main content here that's why that's like that so to style that up what we are going to do now is to introduce what i call what we call media queries so media queries are supposed to allow us pinpoint a particular size then style that size so when we get into that size it auto automatically changes the css to the media query css so exactly what we're going to apply to this now we're going to see changes so to do that let's see and this is going to be the last part of the video so we say media queries Uh, mobile views so we're going to have at these are this is syntax for writing the media so media then a bracket I think so we have a bracket here you have a max width so whenever we have the size going from this particular width which is like 600 pixels then open our bracket so the first we want to do is the cards so we want to target the cards first so we're going to take this copy this then come here and paste that there so originally the width for each card is 33 percent but here you want the cards to take up the full width of that space making them stack on top of each other so we want to take the m um, display and make that block then the width to be let's say 80 percent not fully but let's just say 90 percent of the page 90 percent instead of the three the three percent so let's take a look at that and see if that gets better exactly this is what we want them to look like this we also want them to remain at the center we want them to remain at the center so to do that we going to add um, there we go add a margin to that let's see if that works exactly but they're all on top of each other so we need to do 2 em cm to the top and like that yeah then we have some spaces so this is exactly what we want so it's much more responsive the way it is right now compared to before then the next thing we want to do is to close up this space a little bit there and that's for the main content so let me copy that let's 
Empty matching dash top. Well, that to be zero. Save that. Our loot. Okay, that's not closing up. I think that's a result from this part, this area of the. So let's just leave that. And let's just add. Adding dash bottom to it up to EM. Let's see, where's that? It's not still working. Let's see, much dash top to the amazing crystals to 4 EM. Let's see. I think it's as a result of adding EM to this. Let's leave that to EM. Oh, let's just leave it like that. We save that, go back to our page, reload. Then we have this. So our cards are looking much more better. Looking much more better. So the next thing we want to do now is to work on the hero image right here. And the content inside of the hero image. So to apply styling to that inside of the media queries, I think the only thing we need to do is reduce the font sizes, then make them much more responsive. So that's under hero image section, we're going to take, we're going to take this. This is what we want to edit. Control C, then paste that in the media query section. Then we want to make the uh, the font size to be like 32 pixels. Let's see. So that's so much more smaller now. Then we want to spread that. We don't want it to squeeze together. Give the width of 80 percent of the page. Let's see how that looks like. It's much more wider but not responsive. See, there's a little bit of space by the side. As well. So we have to edit the position. I'm just going to copy that from here. Copy these parts. Control C, then go down here and paste that in. That's going to make this look much more better. So, on the same line. So, what we want to do now is to reduce the left to 10, and then move back up and reload that. So, we have that the center of the page now. Then, think add a padding. Adding of 0.5 EM. We want the button to be not close to the text, so we want to target this body. Control C, then come down here, paste that. But we want to target the H. Let's see what's what's the last text over there. I want to target the H4 content here. So we're going to put H4 and then open brackets. Then we want the padding dash button to be 2 EM. I think that's going to be too much, but let's, let's see how that looks like. Yeah, exactly, too much. I want to reduce that to 1 EM. Reload. And that's much more better. So let's add to this width. Let's see if it even affects anything. 90%. Go back up. Load. There's still that spacing right here. I don't know what's causing that. Let's bring out our 
developer tools you see that so i'm just going to remove this so you can have this on a separate panel of this responsiveness and i want to know what's causing this I'm just going to click on this, select an element on the page, and we see it's our H2 that's causing that extra space, and also the H4. So both of them are what is causing that. So once you click on the H2, you can see the styling which we put in for that. And we can also check out our own styling as you can see the font size which we originally put is being cancelled so uh, our font size is not actually working and also the translate is not actually working and even the font size on the other part is not working so the font size we have 1.5 here which is pretty large so if we use this to okay we can't edit that but what, we, what we can do to make our own stick and not we can see this to add this important so this should work reload that still not working what's going on it's actually working but not that there's still that spacing like we have a little bit of so it is pushing this thing outside of its content we have to let's make this left five save that let's save that and go back exactly this is this is exactly what we want we don't want it to move too out of there so if we even reduce the padding a little bit more to like three percent left then we load okay so this is fully responsive now but this text is too big we want it to spread out on the page still too big so let's see if we can reduce the text more to like um, 28 pixels and reload that so we have that on one line so that which is better we have our first page then welcome to our home then our button then we scroll down then we have our cards then we have our, our footer so this is basically all we're going to do for this tutorial but you see we still have some more work to do with the media queries then it automatically aligns itself so I'm just going to extend these styles to, to not just be 600, let's say like 800, 800 pixels and let's reload that and let's see. So it actually works now. So we have it up to 800 pixels. Yeah, it looks kind of better now. So once we enlarge our screen by it goes back to the original size so that that's all we're going to do for this video let me just open up my console once again and put it in the responsive view so i just want to tell you guys that you can also view your web page on other devices through this toggle device toolbar so once you check the toggle device toolbar then you can select your devices here you can you have galaxy 5 so you can see how your website is going to look like on a galaxy 5 then you can also rotate your screen to see the full page how it's going to look like on the galaxy 5 when you slant your screen to the other direction 
we have pixel 2 we have iphone 5 which is actually the smallest screen size available nowadays to smartphones so you can also see the way it's going to look like on iphone 5 so we have up to the ipad which looks really great on the ipad then we have the ipad pro which can have larger then it still looks good then when you slant it you get close a really good view of the web page so um, thank you guys for watching this video and please remember to subscribe if you like this video and if you love what you've learned here today click the like button i really appreciate that it really helps our channel a lot and one more thing guys immediately after the javascript video we are going to be creating a fully responsive website which is going to include other pages too and when if i get time to add to this project we just created i'm going to add the registration i'm going to add the registration form to this so i can show you guys how to also style a registration form to look really really good so i really appreciate you guys for taking your time to watch this video i hope it was helpful to you guys so please don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to like this this video and if you are if you're having any challenges with this video you can also drop your comments below i'll gladly respond to your challenges and help you solve that so thank you for watching this video and goodbye